Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to use your old BT routers, but this would work on any routers, and turn them into something similar to the BT Wi-Fi disk. So for this to work, you need a hard wire connection into the one of the ports on the back of the disk, such as this. So it could be any of the yellow ports on the back, apart from on the Smart Home 2 you can see the red WAN port, you cannot connect to that. So as long as you have a hard wire connection plugged into the back of your router, this will work. The way I like to do it is with power line adapters. So I have one set at my Vodafone hub and then I have the other set at the other side of my house plugged into the back of a BT hub. So it's plugged in like that on the other set. The power line adapters use the internal wiring in your house for it to work. So first off, you want to factory reset your router just so that you know that all the credentials on the back of the router is going to match what it is. Second up, you want to connect to the router. You can do this via the Wi-Fi or with a hardwire connection. So first off, we're going to connect via the Wi-Fi. So the best way to probably do this is to maybe, if you don't have an old BT hub or router, for example, just to buy one off eBay or Vinted. The one costs more than five or 10 pounds. So that's it connected now. The second option you have is with the hardware connection. When you use the hardware connection, it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to, when you change certain settings, you don't have to keep reconnecting to the Wi-Fi. It will just be automatically on as such. So it works a little bit better, but this is obviously only, you can only do this if your laptop has an ethernet port or if your computer has an ethernet port. Lucky enough, I have a USB to Ethernet adapter, so I have it plugged into the back of the hub and then plugged into my computer. So there's the connection established now. So next up, you want to go to the admin settings. You get to this by typing in 192.168.1.254. Once you do this, you want to click on the middle one, wireless. So this next step is optional. You can change the router name and password to be the same as the one currently in your house. So for me, it would be Vodafone. If you match it to the exact same credentials, the name and the Wi-Fi password, it means that your phone will just connect to whatever is strongest. Or if you're using it in a different room or an office, you can name it work office or games room or whatever so that you know to connect to it yourself. So here I'm just changing it to Vodafone 123 for example and password 123. I'm not going to hit save because I wanted to keep the BT credentials. So for some people I've heard that you need to turn off the firewall. For myself I've done it with them without and it's worked both ways. But here we're just going to disable the firewall and then save the settings. So next you need to change the IP address. If you don't do this they don't really play nicely together you can run into a few issues. So I'm going to use the IP address 192.168.1.63. Make sure this is outside the addressing range of your main hub. By default, this is anything from 192.168.1.64 to 253. Next, you need to turn off the DHCP server as your main hub will handle all that and then press save. So once you hit save, if you're doing it on Wi-Fi, the screen probably will go blank and you'll need to use the IP settings 192 or whatever one you set it to, you should use. So in my case, it'll then 63. And this is the end product. So this is the far corner of my house with the power line adapter. Um, and it plugged into the hub. So as you can see in my settings, this is me connected to the BT hub, not the Vodafone one below. And I'm just going to run a speed test for you to see here. So I'm on the 75 megabyte package with Vodafone. This is on the far end of my house now. And I'm running the speed test. And I'm getting the same, 70 or 72 meg or so. And because you're not using the other ports on the back of the hub, these are active. So if I plug my Ethernet cable from my laptop in here, you'll see it working as well. One last note is that... It will continue to flash purple, although it is working. So you might want to tape over that or go inside and dis or get rid of the LED that is using that. Finally, I want to 
give a good thanks to Owen Kelly. It's his guide that I got all this information off. But um, so that's going to be linked down in the description below.